This is me on stage in front of a live audience about to perform my first ever comedy set. Now you may not remember, but I'm the guy that solved the Rubik's Cube in under 30 seconds last month. But this, this isn't me sitting in my room turning a cube. This, well this is me learning stand-up comedy in 30 days. I was born with a speech impediment. And got extremely frustrated when people, not even my family, could understand what I was saying. And yet, after thousands of dollars spent, years of speech therapy later, I'm a success. But there is still this internal voice that worries if others will notice I sound weird. And every time, I feel like crap. Because I just want to be normal. And that's why I'm doing this. And here's how. First things first, I need material. Wait, how the hell do you write comedy? Okay, here's a quick rundown. Just know that comedy comes from surprise. The theory of incongruity. Think of it like this. You have a really strict, unforgiving, stubborn boss that everyone hates. But then you also see him in a furry costume on his way to a furry convention. Isn't that a bit strange? A bit weird? A bit out of character? Maybe even a surprise? That's incongruity. Also, here are pretty much all the joke structures you should know how to write, especially if you're starting out like I am. And if all else fails, just write what you think is funny and see if it works. One, this isn't a basketball video. And with that knowledge in just a couple of hours, I wrote my first five minute set, and then I wrote my second and third, and by the end of the week, I was ready for... I'm gonna capture this. The Royal Comedy Theater, let's go! I thought I'd just scout out the open mic place first and then sign up for the next time. But after some peer pressure from the host, We would, we would judge you way more than you said no right now and walk <laughs> I was on at 8 p.m. And with one hour until showtime, the nerves kicked in. Okay. I'm about to go on in 15 minutes. And this is me stressing. I am like actually, I'm shaking. I, I don't have any of my script ready. Bro, you have the calmest anxiety. <laughs> I'm like internally freaking out. I'm actually freaking out. I don't know, dude. I don't know, dude. I feel like it'll be good. I feel like it'll be good. You should okay, everyone. Get up! 8 p.m. came. I went up. I stuttered. I didn't know my punchlines and the jokes didn't land. I bombed. My leg! But did I feel bad? No! I felt great. In fact, I got up and hauled my ass straight to the nearest fried chicken place because I was elated. I did a few more that week. Asking Gen Z to do anything by themselves is like asking a millennial to stop saying the word adulting. Like, it's never gonna happen. They were talking about me, I thought you all should know. I really love polar bears. <laughs> I really love polar bears because they remind me of myself. You know, everyone looks at me and they think, you're so, you're so cute. But we also wouldn't mind seeing you die of climate change. <laughs> Before you know it, it was... This was a turning point for me, because it was only after my fourth set that I realized that it didn't matter what other people thought of my voice, or if I had a bad set. The comics that I met and the people I surrounded myself with were so supportive of my goal, I knew that every time I went up on that stage, it would be a little less nerve-wracking. I could feel the insecurity slipping away, confidence slowly taking its place. Okay, with that in mind, let's learn how not to bomb on stage. My leg! Okay, I've gone up on stage a few times and mostly bombed, but how do I learn from that? How do I improve? I was lost. So I had a brilliant idea. I asked Reddit. I went to r slash stand-up comedy 
Unlike Reddit, they gave me conflicting answers. So I said, screw all that. Let's just ask comedians I know myself. I've reached out to a few I met at open mics, and bada boom bada bing, a few actually replied. And one even let me call him for an hour to answer all my questions, give me advice. You know, with 10 years of experience in the industry, Edward, really thank you. You were like the Rayleigh's to my Luffy after Marine Ford. And if you don't get that reference, stop it. Get some help. Watch One Piece. So taking everything in from Redditors, Google, comedians, here are a few things I did to help me improve my comedy that can maybe help you as well. Number one, record your sets. This is great for review. See where they laugh and cut where they don't. Number two, get to the punchline. Imagine if I were to tell you a joke, but before I tell you, I give you this long exposition of how did I get in the situation, what I'm thinking about in the situation, and only after a minute do we actually get to the punchline. Like, no, no one wants that. Just get to the punchline. Number three, write your jokes down and highlight where the laughs should be. Doing this, you can see just exactly how many jokes you're saying in the set. This is my first ever comedy set. You see anything wrong with it? Yeah, there's only three jokes in the entire five minute set. That's a problem. And my last tip, support local comedy. Go to comedy shows, network with other comics. So I took those tips and wrote some new sets. And then I had a spree of open mics. It's time to do, 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 do. Boom. When you're in prison, you've never been to prison, but I'm just gonna imagine that you have. Okay, you have a... I got three of them. Okay, okay. You have like the ball and chain that like prevents you from escaping. I was like that to my older sister. Having any boyfriend. <laughs> uh, Boom. One redeeming quality, or one redeeming quality as a generation, my generation. The one thing that we're most diligent in, you know, it's not our taxes, it's not our careers, it's not our relationships, it's taking pictures of our food. Like, can you name a single animal, Steve, that waits 10 minutes to take photos of their food before they eat it? You can! Boom. Something else about Gen Z is that, you know, our slang is really weird. Whenever new generation comes up with new slang, why is it always the stupidest shit you can think of? <laughs> oh, I, I had my one friend come up to me and said, Oh, Jordan, I'm feeling my fit, you know, I'm gonna flex my trip with all these boomers. <laughs> I'm like, no, George, you're not cool with your tiny splits, you all get knocked off Air Jordans. You look like Drake. A Walmart brand great. Okay, go back to looking like a youth pastor. We like you better than that. Okay, George, okay? Boom. On to... Two more, baby. By this week, I was just trying to have fun. I'm also Korean. I don't speak Korean, though, because I'm also third generation Canadian. My parents thought, oh, if we raise them up in English, he won't get bullied because he won't have that Korean accent. But they also chose to live in Marcos, the most East Asian town of all of GTA. I got bullied because I didn't have a Korean accent. Okay? <laughs> no, because if I ever have kids, well, I'm just going full white. You know, I'm moving to Lindsay, Ontario. I'm going to, I'm going to have my three children, Dan, uh, Justin, and John. Me teaching my kids, let's just role play. Me teaching my kids, you know, Anna, oh, you want to learn Korean? Okay, I'll teach you Korean, you know? She bad is hello in Korean. She bad. You guys can say it. She bad. Yeah, well, turns out my friend was just joking. It actually means um, And that's me trying to teach my Canadian kids how to speak Korean because I don't know shit. All right, thank you. I'm so not Korean that I sometimes wish I was North Korean. Yeah, I'm serious, cause, uh, cause then I can get Kim Jong Un to just knight me as like an honorary true Korean, you know? No one could question my Koreanness again. Okay? I can picture it now, like Sir, everyone have to call me Sir Jordan King. I get a flood of land in North Korea just for myself. Heck, I can get a job working for the North Korean government. All my problems would go away if Kim Jong Un would just take a sword and just. Say, yes, Jordan, true Korean. I'm like, thank you, Kim Jong, thank you. All right, that, that was great. That was horrible, thank you guys, thank you. <laughs>
I started this challenge with the goal of overcoming a childhood trauma and personal insecurity, all while learning the skill of comedy writing. And while I know there's still so much more to learn about stand-up and the nuances of comedy writing, after an intense 30 days, I'm happy to say I'm proud of where I am for both goals. And at the end of the day, that's what matters.